October 10, 1877, the U.S. Army holds a West Point funeral with full military honors for Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong Custer. Today is October 10, 2023, and I would like to bring you this day in history. Killed the previous year in Montana by Sioux and Cheyenne Indians at the Battle of Bighorn, Custer's body had been returned to the East for burial on the grounds of the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, New York, where Custer had graduated in 1861 at the bottom of his class. Even before the Battle of Little Bighorn, Custer won national fame as a bold and some said full-heartedly Civil War commander who eventually came became the youngest major general in the U.S. Army. A handsome man, famous for his long blonde hair, though he cut it short while in the field. Custer, even after the Civil War, continued to attract the appreciative attention of newspapers and the national and the nation as a lieutenant colonel in the 7th Cavalry, a unit recently created to fight in the Western Indian Wars. Reports that Custer treated deserters of the 7th with unnecessary cruelty and overworked his soldiers led to a court-martial and conviction in 1867, but Custer redeemed in the eyes of some with his subsequent attacks on a winter camp of Cheyennes on the Washita River. Others, though, faulted Custer for attacking a peaceful band of Cheyenne and leaving behind some of his men when he withdrew from the battle under cover of night. Though Custer was controversial in his day, his spectacular death at the Little Bighorn transformed him into a beloved martyr in the eyes of some Americans, especially those who were calling for wholesale war against the native population. Some newspapers began to refer to Custer as the American Murat, a reference to a famous military commander of the French Revolution, and they called for decisive retaliation against the treacherous Indians treacherous Indians who had murdered the general. Others refused to believe that Custer's own tactical mistakes could alone explain the disaster at Little Bighorn, and they instead sought a place to blame on the shoulders of other commanders who had been at the battle. Tellingly, no one suggested that clever tactics and leadership by native soldiers had been the cause of Custer's defeat. Custer's widow, Elizabeth, also worked to transform her husband into a legend by writing several auditory books chronicling his career. Hundreds of other books and great fallen leaders of Indian War in Amer many American minds. Custer's status as a natural hero and a martyr only began to be seriously questioned in the 1960s, and since then he has often been portrayed as a vain and glory-seeking man whose own ineptitude was all the explanation needed for the massacre at Little Bighorn. conclusion to an extremely embarrassing situation, President Dwight D. Eisenhower offers his apologies to Ganyan Finance Minister Kamala, Kamala Abeli, Abeli, Kamala Abeli Bedmath, 
who had been refused service at a restaurant in Dover, Delaware. It was one of the first of many such incidents in which African di diplomats were confronted with racial segregation in the United States. While the matter might appear rather small relative to other events in the Cold War, to continue racial slights to African and Asian diplomats during the 1950s and 1960s were the utmost concern to U.S. officials. During those decades, the United States and the Soviet Union were competing for the hearts and minds of hundreds of millions of people of color in Asia and Africa. Racial discrimination in America, particularly when it was directed at representatives from those regions, was as one U.S. official put it, the nation's Achilles heel. Matters continued to deteriorate during the early 1960s when dozens of diplomats from new nations in Africa and Asia faced housing discrimination in Washington, D.C., as well as a series of confrontations in restaurants, barbershops, and other places of business in and around the area. It was clear that American civil rights had become an international issue. On October 10th, 1987, the song, Here I Go Again, by English hard rock group Whitesnake, tops the Billboard pop single chart in, US, in the United States. On October 10th, 1987, the song Here I Go Again by the English hard rock group Whitesnake tops Billboard pop single chart in the United States. Today, what most people remember about the song is the saucy video. The actress Tawny Katane spends a great deal of it in a white negligee whirling and cartwheeling across the hoods of two jaguars parked next to one another. It is one of the most iconic music videos of the 1980s and it features two of the most famous cars in pop culture history. White Snake first released Here I Go Again in 1982 on an album Saints and Sinners. That early version didn't crack the charts so five years later the band re-recorded the song and included the new more amped up version on their album White Snake. While they were working on the record the band's lead singer David Coverdale started dating a young woman named Connie Tawny Katane who had recently starred opposite Tom Hanks in the movie Bachelor Party. When the director, Marty Kallner, met Katane, he was smitten too, and he cast her immediately in the video for Here I Go Again. I knew I wanted to have a sexy woman in it, Kallner told a reporter. Sex is part of rock and roll, and the song was about sex. The video was mostly unchoreographed. Coverdale and Collier simply parked their Jaguars side by side in the middle of the set, blasted the song, and ran the cameras as Katane improvised. After Here I Go Again began, became such a massive hit, however, directors and record companies deduced that fast cars and scantily clad women were a winning combination, and they scrambled to include them in their videos whenever they could. I want to thank you for watching today, and as always, stay safe and stay blessed. And remember to smile, because I love you, but more importantly, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ loves you, and that's the best love that you can have. If you like the content of this video, please give it a... and comment down below. 
those two things really help me out. But what really helps my channel out is if you, 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 if you'd all subscribe. Yeah, it's free, it's easy, and all you have to do is push that all bell notification button so you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. All right, everybody, have a blessed day, and don't forget, I go live at 1.30 p.m. today, so come on over and join me in my live. All right, everybody, have a blessed day, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, everybody.